Last week I had a second look at this base controller application from Sound Particles. Now the basic idea of that application is pretty neat actually. The idea is that you would use your phone in order to position sound in three-dimensional space. And the way this would work is that you would point your phone into the direction where you want your sound to come from, and then the phone would communicate that that position to your digital audio workstation and would set the panning function accordingly. Now, I had originally reviewed that application a while back, but back then I was not particularly impressed, primarily because it was extremely expensive. However, with the release of Noendo 12, Sound Particles released a new version of Sound Controller, and that version works natively with Noendo, and more importantly, is a little bit more reasonably priced. So we had a second look, and we found it to be actually quite useful. It is quite fun to use. Nevertheless, it's still expensive, so the question is, can we use it for something else, or is this a one-trick pony? And this is what we're going to answer today, because you can actually use it for different things. Uh, and today we're going to use it for controlling the source panner in Envelope for Life. Uh, so we're going to actually use Space Controller in Ableton, and that's going to be a lot of fun. But first of all, hello everybody. In case you're new here, my name is Michael Wagner. I teach at the Antoinette Westphal College of Media Arts and Design at Drexel University in Philadelphia. And on this channel, I talk about digital media, game design, and spatial audio. And if any of those things interest you, I invite you to subscribe or join my Discord community. An invite link is in the description below. And uh, if you're already at it, uh, please also don't forget to press the like button because YouTube wants us to do that. Now, with that being said, let's get into some Ableton Live and space controlling the source panel of Envelope for Life thingy. Now, before I show you the details on how to make sound controller work with Ableton, let's first have a look at all the things that we need today. The first thing, obviously, we need the Space Controller application, and uh, it is available for Android as well as iOS. If you're getting Space Controller, what we need is we need the OSC version of Space Controller. And the reason for that is because we need its capabilities to communicate via OSC messaging, because we are going to actually take these OSC messages and reroute them into Ableton. So please, uh, if you are downloading it, uh, use the OSC version of the Space Controller app. It comes in at about 150 bucks, so it's not completely free, but there's a lot of fun that we're going to have with that application. The second thing we need is Envelope for Life. Now, if you are an Ableton user and you've never worked with Envelope for Life, I strongly encourage you to download it and give it a try. It is a set of Max for Life devices that extend the capabilities of Ableton to include the possibility to produce ambisonics audio or spatial audio. And it is extremely well done. And Best of all, it is available for free, so you just need to go to the website, link in the description below, download it, install it wherever you have your Max for Life devices, and just have fun with it. Now, if you need a little bit of help, I did a tutorial back a couple of uh, months ago, and uh, actually years ago, and uh, I'm going to post a link in the description below so you can follow that tutorial. But once again, it is very easy to use and almost self-explanatory and a lot of fun. Now, what we're going to do today is we're going to take the OSC messages that are coming out of the Space Controller application and we are going to route them into Ableton. And for that purpose, we need a Max for Life device that can take in OSC messages and map them to parameters within Ableton. And that's uh, one device that we need. Now, Ableton comes with a touch OSC device, Max for Life device, that is supposed to do that. However, I found it to be very buggy and it never did what I wanted to do. So uh, what we're going to do instead, we're going to use a Max for Life device that has been developed by an Ableton community member and uh, it is a very simple device. It is also very capable and very easy to use, and it's going to do exactly what we need it to do. So uh, I'm going to post a link to that device in the description below. Just go to that website, download it, and install it wherever you have your Max for Life devices. And that's really everything that we need, and we're already set to go. The way I'm going to approach this video today is by focusing on the communication between the Space Controller application and uh, Ableton Live, or in particular Envelope for Live. And I'm going to do that with the bare minimum. So I'm going to just show you how to set the communication up and how to make sure that Space Controller can actually control the source panel in Envelope for Life. And for that purpose, we're going to just set up a very, very basic Envelope for Life project within Ableton. That's really all we're going to do today. I'm going to start with an empty Ableton project, and in order to get an Envelope for Life project going, there are really two things I need to do. The first thing is I need to take the Envelope for Life master bus device and put that onto one of our audio tracks, or it could also be a return track. But in my case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to simply take that master bus device and put that here on the second audio 
track. And uh, the Angular 5 master bus device, its purpose is to turn the ambisonics audio that has been created within Envelope for Life and to convert it back into something that you can monitor through Ableton. That's really its main purpose. You can also use it to export ambisonics, but that's a different story. Once again, link to an Envelope for Life tutorial in the description below. Now, the second thing that we need to do is we need to put the source panel devices on all the tracks that we're going to use for spatial audio production or ambisonics production. Now, for this example, I'm just going to put it onto one track because we're just going to use one instance in order to demonstrate how Space Controller communicates with that source controller or source, source panel. So we're going to take the Envelope for Life source panel and we're going to put it here onto our first MIDI track. And uh, if you're familiar with Envelope for Life, you know that there are really two ways I can control the position of a sound with Envelope for Life. I can either do that through the uh, polar coordinate system where I have azimuth, elevation and the radius. So I can essentially move the sound left, right. That's essentially left, right, really. I can move it up, down, or I can also kind of change the distance. Or I also have the possibility to do the same thing with X, Y, and Z coordinates, where I can change the position of a sound by changing X, Y, and Z in three-dimensional space. Now, for our purpose here, we are going to stick with the polar coordinates because that's actually much more natural when we are going to use the space control application. So we are going to keep it here with uh, the polar coordinate system enabled. It's now time to set up the space controller application on your phone. Now I have it here on my iPhone. Once again, don't forget, we need the OSC version. This is the second button here. So I'm going to press the OSC space controller application. As soon as I press that, it comes up and uh, essentially it's already communicating the azimuth and elevation information. And if I press the big button here, it turns blue and it's also communicating the distance information and I can swipe up and down and uh, that will essentially change the distance. This is essentially the way the space control application works. Now, in order to get it to work with, uh, with our setup, what we need to do is we need to make sure that a couple of settings are set correctly. So let's go into the settings menu, which is which we can do by pressing on the cogwheel that's on the, on the upper right corner. So let's press on that. A couple of things that we need to make sure. First of all, uh, for the host, please select SPAT revolution. That is important because uh, SPAT revolution communicates the parameters in exactly the way the source panel in uh, Envelope for Life actually expects them to get. We could also use Noendo 11, Noendo 12. It would work pretty much the same, but they make a couple of adjustments to these parameters so they don't come in in exactly the way we need them to. So select SPAT Revolution. Uh, we need to make sure that distance is enabled. So make sure that the distance button here is enabled. Also make sure that the stable zero elevation is disabled. The idea of that stable stable elevation is that it is less likely to have uh, or it's, it's, it's sort of a sp stabilization really. It makes sure that if you're moving the phone up and down, it is not as reactive. Um, and obviously that is useful if you're just kind of doing left-right uh, panning. Um, in our particular case, we want to have the full range, so we're going to disable that. And uh, the other thing that we need to make sure is we need to make sure that the coordinates here are set to AED and not XYZ. Uh, because the uh, way the application communicates with Ableton, it actually works better with azimuth, elevation and distance as opposed to X, Y and Z coordinates. It, it just works nicer. We also need to make sure that the maximum distance is set correctly. If you set it up the first time, it will actually have uh, 100 as the default, but the uh, source panel in Envelope for Life expects a number between zero and one. So let's just make sure that the maximum distance is set to one. And then the final thing that we need to do is we need to make sure that the uh, computer IP is set correctly. Uh, that is the IP where you have Ableton running. So that's uh, your main digital audio workstation computer. And um, the port, uh, when you set it up initially, it's set up with 9000. You can choose any port as you want. Just make sure that you remember which port it is. You can go with the standard uh, that is 9000. For some reason, at some point, I set the to 7000, which is fine. And I think that's everything that we really need with the settings. And uh, that means that we can now go into connecting everything together. Now, what's happening now is that the space control application is sending out OSC messages. And uh, I now need to read those OSC messages or receive those OSC messages within Ableton. And the easiest way to do that is by using this OSC input device uh, that I mentioned at the beginning of this video. So let's just take the device and put it onto our track where we have the Envelope for Life source banner. 
And this will essentially allow us to read the OSC messages and map them onto the corresponding parameters on the uh, Envelope for Life source panel. There are a couple of things that we need to set in the OSC input device. In particular, we need to tell it what messages it is supposed to listen to. And in order to do that, let's go into the settings of that device. First thing, uh, we need to set the port. Let's, let's change the port to 7000. That was the one that I chose on my phone. Once again, doesn't really matter which one, just needs to be the same one that you have on your phone. And then we need to set the path. The path is essentially the message header of the OSC device. And the way the space control application works is it's sending it out with a very specific path, with a very specific message header. And that message header starts with ADM uh, slash object. Slash, and then comes the number of the object. You can have multiple instances of uh, the uh, OSC the input device, and this will essentially correspond to different, or the, you can make them correspond to different link numbers in the Space Controller OSC application. We're going to start with uh, object number one. So that's the one that sort of has the number one in the Space Controller application. And then we're going to add AED that uh, essentially tells it that it's receiving the azimuth elevation and distance information. And we need to put it in three times. So let's uh, add here object and one AED and the final one uh, ADM because we are receiving azimuth elevation and uh, distance information. AED. Uh, the uh, message is sent out as an OSC message bundle, so we also need to tell the input device what argument it's supposed to listen to, so the argument uh, number. The azimuth comes in at number zero, the elevation comes in at number one, and the uh, distance comes in at number two. That's essentially just the order of those 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 uh, those elements or, or, or those values. The other thing that we need to set is we need to set the minimum and the maximum of those numbers. And the uh, azimuth is coming in at a range between minus 180 and plus 180. So we need to set the minimum to uh, minus 180 and the maximum to plus 180. And the elevation is coming in at uh, between minus 90 and plus 90. So let's uh, change to minus 90 and plus 90. And the distance is, uh, we set that in the space control application to be one. It's coming in as a value between zero and one. And there's one final thing that we need to do. Uh, for whatever reason, the uh, space control application is communicating the azimuth in the inverted way the uh, source panel is expecting it. So uh, it's essentially if we move the space controller application to the right, uh, the source panel would actually move to the left. So what we need to do is we just need to invert that. So, uh, and we can simply do that by changing the minimum and the maximum values. So we're going to simply say uh, the minimum here is 100% and the maximum is 0% and that will essentially invert, invert the, the azimuth. And the final thing that we need to do is we simply need to map those parameters to the corresponding parameters into a source panel. So let's map that. So let's put the map button here to the azimuth. Uh, let's put the map button here to the elevation and the distance to the uh, to the distance. And that's really everything that we need to do. And uh, now it should actually work. So let me just see if I'm actually getting communication. So if I'm now pressing the button on my space controller application, it should uh, communicate uh, that through OSC messages and Ableton should actually receive that and pass that on to the envelope for life panel. So let's just see if that actually works. So let's press the, press the button and indeed it does. So if I'm moving things around, I need to I need to center my phone first. So let me just kind of click here on the set front button. So this is the front and, uh, and that now, yeah, that communicates that correctly. So if I'm moving left and right, I'm getting it if I'm moving up and down, and if I'm bringing it closer, it ch I'm changing the radius. And once again, what I'm communicating here is object number one, and you can actually see the object number one here on top of the space controller application as the link number. If I'm increasing that, I can have multiple instances, and I would corresponding, uh, I would have to set the messages in this uh, corresponding instances by changing the object number here in the um, in the OSC input device. So if I would have a second one, I would essentially copy the very same values. The only difference I would add a two instead of a one, and that would correspond to the link uh, number two on the space controller application.
And this now allows us to work with Ableton and uh, Envelope for Life in exactly the same way we could work with uh, Nuendo. And that's actually a lot of fun. And uh, I encourage you to try that out. It's very easy to set up and, uh, and it's very useful actually. And it is an additional way of using space controller. So if you purchase it for 150 bucks, it's not only restricted to Nuendo. There are other things that you can do with it as well. Well, this is really everything I wanted to say today. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you got any value out of it, don't forget to press the like button. And once again, if you have any comments or questions, please use the comment section below or join my Discord community. Invite link is in the description below. And with that being said, see you at the next video.